So next speaker uh, for today is Jennifer Lee, and uh, she will give a talk uh, about uh, a con conjecture for log Calabiao surfaces. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the organizers for their invitation to speak today, and also thanks to everyone who's here to listen. So today I'm going to talk about a cone conjecture for log Calabiao surfaces, and this is what I studied in my thesis. In 1993, Morrison made the following conjecture. Let X be a Calabiao threefold. What that means is that X is a complex projective variety of dimension three, Kx is trivial, and X is simply connected. In this talk, I'm going to denote the Neff cone of X by uh, Neff X, and it sits in H2XR. So I'm going to define what this means in just a moment. The statement of the conjecture is that the automorphism group, ought X, acts on the Neff cone of X with a rational polyhedral fundamental domain. So in case of you're not familiar with this term here, um, a fundamental do domain is a piece that tessellates the cone in such a way that no two pieces overlap, except possibly at the boundaries. And if this piece is a rational polyhedral cone, then we call it a rational polyhedral fundamental domain. And for the rest of this talk, I'm going to denote this, um, this term by RPFD. In particular, this conjecture states that the automorphism group of X acts with finitely many orbits on the faces of Neff X. The motivation for this project comes from mirror symmetry. If we assume Morrison's conjecture, then by a construction of Luyanga, we get a complex analytic, uh, complex analytic space, which is conjecturally a neighborhood of a boundary point of the moduli space of the mirror Calabiao threefold. In my thesis, we prove a version of Morrison's conjecture for log Calabiao surfaces. So before I state some results, let me go over some definitions that we use. First of all, a log Calabiao surface is a pair YD with these properties. So Y is a smooth complex projective surface. D is a normal crossing divisor in Y. So what that means is that when we have two components at the point where they intersect, there's going to be two distinct tangent directions. And also we have that KY plus D is zero. By the way, we always assume in this talk that D is non-empty and also D is singular. So if YD is a log Calabiao surface, then we can use the adjunction formula to show that every connected component of D is one of these three types. It's either going to be a smooth curve of genus one or a rational nodal curve or a cycle of P1s. So in this case three, if it's a cycle of P1s, we would label the components D1, D2, D3, all the way up to Dn. And we write the boundary D as D1 plus D2 plus all the way up to Dn. And this N is what we call the length of the boundary D. So using our assumption that D is singular and by some results in the classification of surfaces, we can conclude that Y is rational and D is going to be one connected component either of type two or type three. So either a rational nodal curve or a cycle of P1s. So first, I will go over two examples of log Calabiao surfaces. Uh, the first example is, this is a statement in torque geometry that if Y is a smooth projective, projective torque surface with torque boundary D, 
and D is in the linear system minus KY, then YD is a log Calabial surface. So this is the first example. And if we start with a log Calabial surface, YD, and let's say we have a smooth point P that lies on the boundary D, so this is P, and let's take pi to be the blow up of P in Y. Uh, sorry, this is a little bit hard to read my handwriting here. Um, so this is Y tilde D prime. And um, here we get a minus one curve from the blow up. And D prime here is the strict transform of D in uh, Y tilde. Then Y tilde D prime is also a log Calabial surface. Okay, so another term that we'll need is this notion of generic. So we say that a log Calabial surface YD is generic if there are no minus two curves C in Y minus D. So what I mean by a minus two curve here, it's a curve C that's isomorphic to P1 and it has self-intersection minus two. So it's a fact that if y1 d1 and y2 d2 are two generic pairs in some connected component of the moduli space of Lewinia pairs, then uh, of log Calabial pairs, then nef y1 is isomorphic to nef y2. And so this is shown in this picture below. Here we have a point P and a point Q. They lie in some connected component S. And here gamma is a path from P to Q. So upstairs, we have a one parameter family of surfaces that interpolate between, interpolates between uh, Y1, D1 and Y2, D2. And this common cone, we denote by nef Y gen. And the reason that there is a common cone is because this nef Y1 is contained in H2, Y1, R, and nef Y2 is contained in H2, Y2, R. And we get an isomorphism here. This comes from parallel transport along the path gamma. And that's why these two nef cones will coincide. So uh, before I am able to state our first main theorem, I have two points to go over here. So the first one is uh, ADM. This is called the admissible group. And it's defined to be the set of all theta in the automorphism group of pick Y. So here, this dot is the usual, uh, the usual dot product. It's the set of all automorphisms here such that they preserve nef y gen and also each boundary uh, component di. And it's a fact or it's a result from uh, gross hacking and keel that the admissible group is the same as the monodromy group. So the monodromy group is defined as follows. If we have a family of pairs and we loop around the base, then we get an automorphism of pick Y or of H2. So this here, uh, by the way, this is H2, Y, Y, Z, together with the usual cup product. So we get an automorphism of pick Y or H2 whenever we take a loop around the base. And if we take all possible loops in the base, then what we get is this monodromy group. Okay, so that's the first thing we need for theorem one statement. And the second thing we need is this idea of nef effective cone of Y. So this nef effective cone is the intersection of two cones, the nef cone of Y and the effective cone of Y. So the effective cone of Y is defined to be the set of all linear combinations of these CIs where the coefficients are non-negative real numbers and the CIs are curves in Y. So in dimension two, the effective cone actually coincides with the cone of curves. So that's this cone here. 
And then what is the NEF cone of Y? The NEF cone is the collection of all L in pick Y tensor R, such that L dot C is non-negative for every curve C and Y. So uh, actually, what's the relation here with the NEF effective cone? Well, this is the closure of the NEF effective cone of Y. So how are these related? Well, the interior of the NEF cone of Y, uh, which is also the ample cone of Y, this is an open cone. So it'll look like this. And if we take the interior and then add on some rays from the boundary, then we get the NEF effective cone of Y. So it's going to be the interior plus uh, what are the vectors that we add? We just take the rays that are generated by a rational vector and we get some points on the boundary. And if we take the interior plus all the boundary points, then we get the NEF cone of Y. So now we can state theorem one. The statement of theorem one is that the admissible group acts on the NEF effective cone of Y gen with a rational polyhedral fundamental domain. So the general idea of how this proof works is the effective cone of Y gen is covered by some cones C E1 to E K defined in this way. So it's the cone that's generated by all of the boundary components along with uh, here, what are these E1 to E Ks? These are disjoint interior minus one curves. So what I mean by minus one curve here, they're smooth rational curves of self intersection minus one that are not in D gen. By the way, this result was proved by angle Freeman for Z coefficients. So if this were Z, and then we generalized it to work for R. And so because of this, we find that the NEF effective cone of Y gen is covered by these C primes, which are defined to be these Cs, which are from here, intersected with the NEF cone of Y gen. So we know that this is rational polyhedral because it has finitely many generators. And we can see also that the C prime is rational polyhedral. The reason is because this C, because it's rational polyhedral, it'll look something like this. And then we impose some conditions when we intersect with NEF Y gen. So we have some half spaces, like this would be say A dot DI is zero. And we want a certain region of the half space. So if I do this for all conditions, then I get a piece like this. And this is going to be my C prime, which is also rational polyhedral. Okay, so that's the first main step in the proof. And the second thing is that the admissible group acts on all collections of these E1 to EKs with finitely many orbits. So here we use a result from Friedman, which states that there is a correspondence between the orbits of the action and also these deformation types of log Calabial surfaces that are obtained from YD by contracting minus one curves. And because there are finitely many of these, there are also finitely many orbits. So putting one and two together, we find that the NEF effective cone of Y is covered by a bunch of these C primes, which are rational polyhedral, and the admissible group acts on the set of these C primes with finitely many orbits. And therefore, using um, this result by Louis Yanga, it follows that the admissible group acts on the NEF effective cone of Y gen with a rational polyhedral fundamental domain. So this is the first major result. And before I state the second, uh, second theorem, I also need to introduce these two ideas. 
So first of all, in each deformation type, there exists a unique log Calabi-Yau surface, Y-E-D-E, such that the Deline mixed Hodge structure on H2 Y-E minus D-E is split. So by a result of Friedman, this is the same as saying that if L is in pick Y and L dot DI is zero for every I, then L restricted to D is the trivial line bundle. And the second thing that we need for the statement is that the automorphism group of YD is the set of all automorphisms of Y such that the DIs are preserved. So now we can state this uh, theorem two, which, which says that ought YEDE acts on the nef effective cone of YE with the rational polyhedral fundamental domain. So before I explain how this, uh, how this theorem works, I want to make the remark that if I don't have the E's, the E subscript here and here, this claim that ought YD acts on the nef effective cone of Y with an RPFD is typically false for a log Calabial YD. And an example of this if, is if I take Y bar to be P2 and D bar to be a rational nodal cubic and Y the blow up of nine points, nine general points on D bar and D uh, is the strict transform of D bar then in this case, the automorphism group is trivial, but the nef cone of Y is not rational polyhedral. So this theorem doesn't, uh, this theorem fails. And this is uh, similar to an example of Nagata, except there's a smooth cubic in that example. So if I don't take the, the E's here, then the statement is not true. Okay. So I will just explain the general idea of how this works. Uh, the first thing that we need is theorem one, which again is stating that the admissible group or the monodromy group acts on the net effective cone of Y gen with a rational polyhedral fundamental domain. And this allows us to use a proof that is similar to a proof done by Stirk for K3 surfaces. And then we can conclude that theorem two holds. Okay. So uh, another result that we have is that if YED is a log Calabi-Yau surface with either a negative definite or negative semi-definite boundary, and if N, which Again, this N is the number of components of DE. If it's no greater than six, then nef YE is rational polyhedral. And also the automorphism group of YE DE is trivial for N equals six. So this statement here uh, was actually shown by Louis Yanga for N less than or equal to five. And we just showed it for N equals six. So instead of going over the proof for this theorem, I will go over um, an example. So this is one of the simplest examples. If n equals three, we have three boundary components and we consider ye, then there's this theorem of Luyanga, which tells us that yd, if yd is a Luyanga pair with either negative definite or negative semi-definite boundary, then yd is the blow up of smooth points of the boundary of Y bar D bar. So here Y bar is P2 and D bar is a triangle of lines. So D bar is going to be something like this. And in our case, we choose these three collinear points, Q1, Q2, Q3, and we blow up these points some number of times. So here I have a picture of um, this Y bar D bar. And let's say F bar is the line that goes through the three collinear points. 
And here it's drawn as a tropical curve. So when we blow up some number of times, what we get is this following picture. So if we blow up, let's say at Q1, we blow up P1 times, at Q2, we blow up P2 times, and Q3, P3 times, then we get these three chains of minus two and minus one curves. So there are mostly minus two curves, except for a single minus one curve that intersects the boundary component. And in this case, the cone of curves of YE is generated by all of the curves shown on the top right. So all of the curves in this picture, the boundary components, the interior uh, minus one, minus two curves, and also this um, F curve in the middle here. And because this cone of curves has finitely many generators, it's rational polyhedral. And so the Neff cone of YE, which is the dual of the cone of curves, is also rational polyhedral. So, uh, so that shows the, the theorem three holds for n equals three and for YE. Now let's consider the case when n equals three and we have Y gen. By a theorem of Luyanga, we know that ADM is equal to W for n less than or equal to five. So here, W is the vial group. It's generated by reflections, uh, S alpha, where alpha is the class of a minus two curve. And in this case, this uh, vial group is associated to the root system, which is denoted by T P1, P2, P3, which is the dual graph of this. So this is like the interior part, almost the interior of the last picture I showed, except we're missing some minus one curves at the end. And in this case, the vial group acts on the Neff effective cone of Y gen with fundamental domain Neff YE. And we already showed in example one that this is rational polyhedral. So this proves the theorem for N equals three when we take Y gen. Another example is the case when n is seven. So here, let's say that F is a minimal elliptic vibration and uh, the mortal Bay group of F is the sections of the vibration together with a group law. And in this case, we have an elliptic vibration from YEDE to P1 with these fibers here. And we know in this case that the mortal Bay group is defined in this way. So this allows us to compute the rank of the Mordelay group. In this case, the Mordelay group is, uh, is infinite. In fact, it's equal to Z. And in particular, the size of the automorphism group is infinite. And therefore the Neff cone of YE is not rational polyhedral. So, here, what happens is the mortal Lay group acts on the set of minus one curves or the sections of the vibration transitively. And the automorphism group is a finite index subgroup of the mortal Lay group. Then, ot yede acts on the set of minus one curves with finitely many orbits. So this was actually studied by Totaro, uh, this, uh, Ot YEDE acts on the effective cone of YE with a rational polyhedral fundamental domain. And he showed, in fact, that Ot YD acts on NEF EY with a rational polyhedral fundamental domain whenever Y is a rational elliptic surface. So uh, this example is interesting because um, before, if N is less than or equal to six, then NEF YE is rational polyhedral. Uh, and the automorphism group is trivial, but this is an example where the automorphism group is infinite, but the theorem still holds. So there is a mirror symmetry interpretation here uh, that has to do with deformation of cusps. So if YD is a log Calabi-Yau surface and D is negative definite, then we can contract all of the boundary D to a cusp P. And Neff Y prime is going to be, we define to be Neff Y intersected with D1 to Dn perp. 
And in this case, so we showed here that the admissible group or the monodromy group acts on the NEF effective cone of Y prime gen with the rational polyhedral fundamental domain. Okay, so um, this construction of Luyanga gives a complex analytic germ, which is roughly a toric variety quotiented by the monodromy group from the action of ADM on this NEF effective cone of Y prime gen. And it's a fact that cusp singularities come in dual pairs. So there's a conjecture which states that this germ is a smoothing component of the deformation space of the dual cusp singularity, uh, Q to P. Moreover, the general fiber over this component is mirror to Y minus D. So what I mean by this mirror here, um, so mirror symmetry asserts that these Calabial varieties come in pairs, X, Y. And the general idea of how this works is that the complex geometry of X is related to the symplectic geometry of Y. And our project is related to this side here, specifically the statement that ADM acts on the NEF cone of Y gen is related to this, uh, this side. And so our cone conjecture is the analog of the Morrison conjecture for Calabial threefolds, except that in our case, we replace the automorphism group by the monodromy group. Okay, so that's all I have to say. Thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much, Jennifer. We thank you. And are there comments or questions? There were questions in the chat, so if you want to speak. Oh, sorry, I didn't see these questions. They were answered too, so. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, okay, so this, uh, so, well, let's see, effective cone of Y is, is here, right? Um, yeah, I think it, um, we can allow for non-Cartier divisors. So it doesn't have to be. So what's one question maybe? Because you, you give this nice description when n is equal to seven with the elliptic vibrations. So oh. are the value of n for which you have elliptic vibrations or? Um. Oh yeah. So are, are there other other cases? You mean other yeah. n values where there are elliptic? When you have these uh, elliptic vibrations, and nice example like that. Yeah. Um. I think so. I just studied n equals. Uh, eight and nine, and eight splits into two cases. And I believe that for one of those cases, there were elliptic vibrations, but I didn't study it even more <laughs> than that. So um, yeah, yeah, I think there are other ones. Are there more comments or questions to Jennifer? Otherwise we can, thanks again. Thank again, Jennifer for her talk, thank you. Thank you.